What's up, guys? Um, back here again with uh, some more homework help, uh, showing you how to do these uh, velocity time graphs. Uh, this is going to be um, should be pretty interesting. Uh, we'll uh, see how this works, uh, and uh, hopefully, it'll give you some help doing the homework. So let's jump into it. Number one, um, this is going to be a, a description that you've got here of an object, and you're going to draw a motion map and the velocity time graph. Um, remember that uh, the velocity, if it's uh, steady, you're going to get some pretty boring graphs. Um, if it's constant velocity, you're going to get these flat line graphs. I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. Let's jump right into the first one. The object's moving in the positive direction at a constant speed. So positive direction means we're going to have positive velocity. It's at a constant speed, so that's going to be a straight line, a regular old uh, some number positive up here, and it's going to stay that way as time goes on. So as time continues, it continues to maintain that same value. All right, that's supposed to be a straight horizontal line. Um, hopefully that's what that looks like. Uh, what does that look like on the motion map? Well, on the motion map, it looks like uh, moving in the positive direction at constant speed. It looks something like this where I just have a constant step each time. Now I don't know how many dots to put or anything like that because I don't have numbers on any of this, but I do know that they're going to be the same spacing apart and I know that the arrows are all going to be the same size because the spacing is the same. Remember we draw the arrows to halfway in between or the vectors. Uh, this one says the object standing still, number two. Uh, standing still, it doesn't say where but I know that standing still, I'll start with the motion map this time. I know standing still looks something like where I stack some points. It doesn't say how many, I'm just going to do four. If it's standing still, what velocity does it have? It has zero velocity, right? Zero on our graph is right there. It's going to have zero velocity. And as time goes on, the graph still continues on. It doesn't just end with a dot there. Uh, time continues and it continues to have zero velocity. So we kind of go right on top top of the graph. Kind of screwing that up. Let me erase this. Try again. Um, maybe make it a little bit of a thicker line here for you. So if I am on the graph there, it's a line. It looks something like this. That's super thick. Let's go to like a two. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's what that looks like. So zero velocity and it stays at zero the entire time. It doesn't go up, it doesn't increase velocity or decrease or anything. Motion map looks like that. Let's take a look at number three. There's a bunch on here. Actually, you know what? We're going to skip to the next page. So this, these ones have some more changes going on in them, but it's the same thing. Um, and so uh, you can check that out. Uh, positive direction would be, um, positive would be here, negative would be there. You know what? Let's just do this one. The object moves in the negative direction at a steady speed for 10 seconds. I'm just going to use two dots for every second. Steady speed for 10 seconds, then stand still. So in terms of the velocity, it's in the negative direction. So it's going to be a negative velocity, and it's going to be that way for 10 seconds. We'll just go about halfway, make that be 10 seconds. Then it says it stands still. Well, stand still was up here, so that's going to be standing still at zero. can't seem to draw a straight line sometimes uh, with this, but there you go. All right, um, how does that look on the motion map? Well, it's moving negatively. All right, so it's moving in the negative direction. So I need to kind of start away from zero and show that. So I got two seconds, four, six, eight, ten, and then it stops for ten. Two, four, six, eight. 10. I've got my arrows in the negative direction. All right, and I kind of look something like that. Again, it doesn't tell me where. It doesn't have any information about position. And that's kind of a thing that we can't get from velocity time graphs. Anytime we have a velocity time graph, we're getting velocity and time. And unless it tells us in a description where it started, we don't know. Just like this one started in the middle, this one started here. You could have drawn it anywhere started anywhere you want it. We don't have that information. Let's take a look at number four. Number four says the object moves in a positive direction at a steady speed for 10, then reverses direction and moves backward at the same speed. I'm going to assume for another 10 seconds, so we'll just do the same thing we did before. 
Starting with the velocity time graph, moves positive for 10 seconds. All right, reverses direction and moves backwards. So we're gonna have this kind of disjointed, piecewise, piecewise looking graph. Um, this isn't very realistic. Nothing goes forward and then backward. You know, nothing goes positive direction and then negative direction at the blink of an eye. There's always a point in there where it's gonna be stopped or changing. Um, but for the graph, we've got a positive velocity and then we go down to a negative velocity what does that look like for the graph well I'm gonna start kinda of here whoops down here two four six eight ten seconds then it goes negative four two four six eight ten seconds I'll soon draw the arrows in there and we get something that looks like this hopefully at this point you're getting more comfortable with the motion maps how to draw them at least why did I choose to start here I chose to start here because just I did it doesn't really matter it doesn't say where again where position it started I got a positive for 10 seconds I got a negative for 10 seconds this dot I didn't put it up there but that dot I'm saying equals two seconds same thing for up here dot equals two seconds sometimes it's gonna be important to uh, notate that All right. great now we have a velocity time graph uh, drawn from a position time graph so remember we discussed or um, it was mentioned uh, in the lab that the velocity is the slope of the graph so what I want to do is I want to draw, draw the slope and if we take a look at the first one this slope it doesn't change here's a changing slope here's another changing slope but the tilt of this graph or the slope of this graph doesn't change it's always positive going up left to right we read left to right so left to right going up is positive left to right going down is negative we've got a positive slope we actually have a one up one over one up one over one up one over one so we have a positive slope of positive one All right, positive one is the slope and it stays positive one the entire time so I end up with something like that. All right, number six. Number six has a change in slope. We have a, what we're going to have is going to have a positive slope, and then we're going to jump to a negative slope. So I'm going to start up here somewhere, and then I'm going to be down here. All right, first I need to kind of figure out what the slope is. I got up one over one. So I didn't do it up above, but I'm going to do it here. I got a one over one slope. Here I've got a negative down one over two over one so if I kind of put that in here and I could see what that looks like down two over one so my slope is going to be negative two over one graphing it I've got it going for two seconds at a positive one and then it jumps down to a negative two for the remaining two seconds so pretty simple once you get the hang of it you're just kind of uh, notating uh, what it looks like so and you're getting a feel for these graphs getting a feel for what uh, the motion is that kind of thing all right let's do the next one number seven we've got um, I'll mark the slopes again uh, this one goes over one uh, up two over one so we've got a slope of for this part we've got a slope of two over one this part we've got a up one over two okay so up one over two so that's a half they're both positive this first one lasts for one second so here we go at two positive two for one second that's that first section just for one second and then the rest of the time we're at one half still positive but one half one half is going to be somewhere right there and I stay at one half the whole time I got something just like that All right, there are some questions down here for mini graphs, both the slope and the area represent something. We're going to talk about that um, in a separate video. I want you to kind of think about what those are. Do your best to answer those questions. You should be able to answer 8A, um, 8B. Uh, you should be able to answer all of these. The last one at the bottom, 8C, is going to be kind of the issue. But do your best, um, and we'll see you soon.